here with Mr. Rutledge in the Carpentry Pathway, and I'm going to ask him, what do you do in the Carpentry Pathway, and what can those planning to follow this pathway expect from it? In the Carpentry path Pathway, we uh, try to prepare kids to uh, be able to frame a house from the ground up. Uh, so they're going to be working on framing all the way to the finishing product. Um, and that way, whenever they go out in the field um, after, after school, they can uh, hopefully get a job in the industry and be very successful there. All right, cut it. Who would you recommend this pathway to? I would recommend this pathway to anybody that is interested in carpentry or learning uh, a trade that uh, they can use even at home. Uh, they don't have to in necessarily go into the industry, but if it's something that uh, everybody has a house to work on or something to work on and it would uh, give them skills that they could use, life lifelong skills that they could use down the road. All right. All right, so how can this pathway better prepare you for your future? It gives them lifelong skills that they could use uh, for the rest of their lives and uh, teaches them how to work with their hands and it also makes them where they're not intimidated about uh, tackling jobs. Hi, I'm Caleb Denny and I'm with Scott Herschelman and today we're going to be interviewing him with the Autotech Pathway. What do you do in the Autotech Pathway and what can those planning to follow this pathway expect from it? Well, in the Auto Pathway, we work on a series of tasks that the industry kind of demands of us or what they want us to try to teach young people and how they can learn and, and what tasks they can learn. So we work off those tasks, basically all different systems on the car, learn how they operate and how to diagnose and how to repair them. Uh, the pathway can lead to all kinds of different careers, but uh, you know, you can be a mechanic or automotive technician, or you could be a parts supplier, or you could be a, 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 a service manager or somebody like that that works in administration. You could be an automotive engineer that, that uh, uh, builds and designs cars, all kinds of different pathways that you can lead to from this program. Next question, who would you recommend this pathway to? Well, this pathway is open to anybody uh, that's usually like interested in technical things or mechanical things or likes to work with their hands. Um, they usually enjoy that type of stuff. You know, when I got interested in it, I like to take things apart, fix them, put it back together again. So usually the people that are interested in that hands-on activity, uh, male or female, it's a good pathway to get involved with. Next question. What will you gain in the future from this pathway? Well, you can learn the skills it takes to repair cars. There's always job openings for mechanics and technicians. It's like an unlimited field, uh, you know. So you could develop that skill, at least at least get to the entry level skill where you could become an uh, uh, entry level technician and work in a car dealership or a uh, uh, any kind of repair facility, uh, diesel mechanics, other branch off into all kinds of different mechanical fields. So, and like I said, I was talking about uh, to some of my kids earlier. You could also develop into management skills. That's what I did. I started out as an entry-level technician, was an auto mechanic, and got to be a master auto mechanic. And then I went into service management, and then I ended up here teaching. So it can branch out into all different possibilities. Uh, an automotive engineer, a uh, parts specialist. Uh, you could work for Ford or Mercedes or something like that. You know, wide open field for male and female. How can this pathway better prepare yourself for the future? Well, it helps you in a lot of ways. I mean, for one thing, you develop that uh, mechanical ability and knowledge about your car, so you can help you actually repair your car yourself, or it helps you to you know start a career in the automotive field, either as an auto technician or uh, or like we talked about before, a, an automotive engineer or a parts specialist. Just gains more knowledge about the automotive field and the automotive uh, machine itself. So uh, even if you don't stay with that career pathway it helps you learn more about your own car that you can do your own maintenance or or you know better about when somebody tries to sell you uh, repairs or something like that you just know more about your own car so uh, a lot of ways it helps you you for a career in the business field and everything's a business so it's pretty much anything if you've ever thought about owning your own business or working for a corporation any of those um, aspects being an accountant being a manager um, any uh, personal finance financial advisor any of those things so you need to take um, 
Well, actually, you're lucky because you already take a, a business class. You're going to take computer apps your freshman year, and that counts as a business class. So then you have to take accounting and finance foundations. Okay. Uh, who would you recommend this pathway to? Well, anybody who has any aspirations to go into the business world, and it could be anybody that um, knows right away that they want to be a personal finance um, person or a, an accountant, a CPA, a manager, or even if you want to be a mechanic and own your own business or you're going to be in um, – retail sales or anything like that so it's a it's a very vast array of options to choose from okay uh, what can taking this pathway earn you for the future well if you take this pathway it's going to prepare you for a major in business and 50 percent of all students in all colleges major in business so more than likely um, it will help you in your business and your college career and then from there the sky's the limit you can do pretty much anything you want with a business degree uh, how can this pathway better prepare you for the future well um one of the things I like about the pathway is you have to take accounting and finance foundations and in that class we start with personal finance so how to budget for yourself how to uh, balance your checkbook how to uh, what are credit cards and how do they work and how do you get a home loan and how do you pay for a car and that just those general things that will help propel you to be an adult in general um, that we don't necessarily get to teach you in math classes anymore because it's so core content fo focused um, so hopefully I think anybody could take this class and get something out of it um, and you know accounting is a study of money and who doesn't like money that's right. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kirsten. I'm here interviewing Mr. Sexton about the engineering pathway. Okay, so what do you do in the engineering pathway and what can those planning to follow this pathway expect from it? Okay, I teach the uh, Principles of Engineering course, which is the second class in the engineering career pathway. Uh, the first class is um, uh, Introduction to Engineering Design, and Caleb Payton teaches that. Then I teach Principles of Engineering. And then after you get out of my class, you can either go into civil or you can go into electronics, which Mr. Payton teaches both those classes. Okay. Who would you recommend this pathway to, like interest and personality-wise? Uh, if you are good in math and you like figuring out how to take things apart and why they, how they work or put them together, if you're a person who's hands-on, you like to build stuff, engineering could be a good career for you, especially if you are a young lady, because uh, the engineering field has been predominantly dominated by men. And uh, companies out there will throw a lot of money at a young lady to consider becoming an engineer. What can taking this pathway earn for your future? Uh, <laughs> great money. Money isn't everything, but uh, when I, two years ago, I was considering going back into the engineering field. Uh, and the reason I was considering it was because I have an in industrial engineering background, and my wife works with the company, and their, huma their um, human resources person told her that industrial engineers coming out of college, no experience, $85,000 a year. And uh, that's a little bit more than what a teacher makes. So I actually considered going back into the engineering field two years ago and uh, just decided not to. Uh, I'm happy where I'm at. I've got a couple more years and then I'm going to retire. All right, last question. How can this pathway better prepare you for the future? It can set you up for a really good livelihood. Um, I spent 25 years as an engineer. I earned a lot of money, uh, had, had money to burn, took nice vacations, I have a nice house, um, you, and it can be a rewarding field. Again, money is not everything, uh, so if you're not happy doing what you're doing, you need to find something else to do. Uh, case in point, I'm happy as a teacher, I don't need the $85,000 a year as an engineer. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My name is Keith Stone. I'm the IT teacher here at CTE unit at the high school. Uh, I do teach two pathways, uh, security and computer programming. In the computer programming, we teach, uh, or I teach, um, intro to computer or game design, 
uh, advanced game design and software development, and also uh, mobile game and mobile app development. In the security, it's I teach hardware and security and um, intro to hacking, ethical hacking, and um, advanced ethical hacking. What can you do in the marketing pathway? What can people that want to take it expect from it? People who take the marketing pathway should expect a lot of excitement and a lot of fun. Okay, so we are really creative and we get to create all these beautiful shirt designs and we get to sell things to people we get to learn how to take inventory we learn how to make change and keep the cash register so we we learn real life skills and it's all like a ton of fun you just ask anybody who's in marketing who would you recommend this pathway to personality wise personality wise you need to be somebody who is um, you can be outgoing or you can be kind of quiet either way is fine typically people who enjoy marketing are um, are outgoing though a lot of times um, you learn how to talk to people you learn how to sell things um, somebody who's creative creativity always helps somebody who is a self-starter and can take initiative um, but those are also things that we learn so if if really if you enjoy shopping or advertisements you will probably enjoy marketing class in this pathway you learn um, skills that are going to be important to you in the future most people will at some point work in some type of customer service so you're going to learn how to talk to people and you know no matter if you're running the concession stand at a ball game or if you're you have a job as a cashier you're going to need to know how to make change you're going to need to know how to count back change to people and how to talk to people and so that's one of the things that you will learn in marketing thank you you're welcome hello i'm cameron and i'm interviewing miss lancaster about the agriculture pathway what do you do in the ag pathway well, in the Ag Pathway, there are three uh, different options that students have when they enter agriculture education classes. Um, we have an environmental science pathway, an animal science pathway, and we have a horticulture pathway. So what we like to do is we like to make learning applicable to real life situations to our students. So we have a wonderful greenhouse lab that students enrolled uh, in our horticulture pathways have access to. We also have a 14 acre land lab that students in our ag classes have access to to get some hands-on learning. And then we also have our shop laboratory that students uh, we take out there for hands-on learning as well. Um, we have some really cool things out in the greenhouse that are new. We um, have an aquaculture uh, facility out there so we're trying to teach students about sustainable farming and we also do hydroponics out there so we have a bunch of hands-on opportunities for students in the ag pathway well that's pretty neat who would you recommend this pathway to you well agriculture is everywhere around us so there's not like one set student like one profile that i can say that agriculture fits because agriculture affects our life from the time you get up out of bed every morning brush your teeth to the time you go to bed at night so Students that are interested in, um, you know, obviously animals, um, if they're interested in plants, working with plants, any type of research with animals or plants, I would say agriculture would be the perfect fit. It seems like the, one of the most popular career choices among students is they all want to be veterinarians. So uh, we are your one-stop shop for that because we have a very exclusive animal science pathway that's tailored toward that. Um, then we also have our envi environmental science pathway for students that are more interested in the research. Uh, we have a wildlife management class that's going to be offered next year that's going to be really cool. So, um, you know, I would say anybody that has a general interest within agriculture or, uh, you know, know definitely that they want to be involved with agriculture past high school. That's pretty neat. What can take in this pathway earn you for the future? Well, we have uh, some COSA um, exams that students take, and this we just recently um, got industry certification exams approved for our area. That's one thing that we haven't had in the past. So students can get endorsements from industry certifications. Um, they can get endorsements from floral design. They can get endorsements from the animal science industry. So that's something new that has uh, come our way that we're really excited about The students can have the opportunity to take. Obviously, whenever a student passes COSA, they get three hours free college credit 
if they earn a 70 percent or better on their COSA exam. So there's a lot of incentives. Uh, we offer some dual credit classes down here with the Henderson Community College and Murray State University through their Racer Academy. So those are some other things that students can get involved with as well. How can this pathway better prepare you for the future? Well, agriculture, like I said earlier, is all around us. So just becoming more aware of uh, agriculture in everyday life can be beneficial to anybody. And then if you are looking for a career choice within agriculture, we have three pathways that will set you up to do basically anything that, that may be of interest to a student. Oh, well. That's all we got today. Thanks, Ms. Lancaster. What can you do in the manufacturing pathway and what can those planning to follow this pathway expect from it? Uh, in this pathway you can run CNC mills, CNC lathes, uh, we have prototrack mills. Uh, expecting from it, uh, you can expect to possibly co-op your senior year, uh, get the training for our local machine trade uh, in this area, we have a lot of a lot of companies in this area that that offer machining. Who would you recommend this pathway to, interest and personality-wise? Uh, anybody that wants to work with their hands. Uh, anybody can do it. Men, women, just have to be able to work with your hands and somewhat like math. What can taking this pathway earn you for the future, and how can it better prepare you for the future? Uh, this pathway, you can earn a NIMS accreditation. It's um, it's for it's nationally recognized uh, accreditation where you are certified in doing a specific skill. Uh, we have skills from bench work to drill press to CNC, all the above. Thank you. This is Drew Willett reporting from CCN on the VizCom pathway. So, what is visual communications? Um, well, visual communications basically is any way for a person to send a message to somebody with a picture or an image. So in other words, it can be typography or it can be uh, an image or strong image or something like that, but you're really just trying to convey a message with a visual. So what kind of students would you recommend visual communications to personality and just, yeah, I can't remember. All right. Um, to be honest with you, I, I don't know that there's a particular person that I would recommend visual communications to, but uh, being artistic is important. It does help. Um, and then the knowledge of computer systems is also important. But I always tell people that with your generation, everybody was pretty much raised on a computer. So if you have those skills and have an iPhone or an iPad or anything like that at home, then you're probably in a good shape as far as learning how to operate the computers that are in here. And um, some of the people that are on your staff with the uh, Colonel Cast and other people that are in the school could probably tell you if they take in my class, learning how to operate an iMac is not that hard to do. It's basically just like an iPhone. It's just things are in different locations, so. So how can doing this help you in the future? Well, I would say that um, it's important it's important for me to emphasize early in the class that uh, you can take Adobe certifications as a senior. And if you take those Adobe certifications and pass them, then when you go to college or to get a job, it lets people know there that you are aware and are proficient at operating the system and the software that, that they'll use. And it's an industry standard software. So it's not like I know how to operate this software, but not that one. It's everybody uses the same software. So whenever they graduate and they want to get a job that puts them through college, even it, it allows you to do that. Um, I know how to operate Illustrator, Photoshop and InDesign. Well, if you go into a, a local business that that does design, they're going to need that. And then that could that could easily turn into a job that pays you great money to be able to put you through college. And that's, I always talk to people about that. And, and on top of that, if you, if you diversify yourself and learn video and audio and, and website design, then now you have multiple streams of income and you, and you can really be successful. And I've even told people that if you're artistic and you have the ability um, and college is maybe not an option for you right out of school, 
you can easily you know work as a designer out of high school and then build your income to be able to go to college because a lot of kids are afraid that they don't have the money to go to college you know what i mean and i always tell them number one that's false because there's grants and loans that are available that allow kids to go to school no matter what their income is but if you don't feel comfortable with it this would be a way to, to build your stream of income thank you back to the studio Hi, I'm Drew Willett reporting from CCN. I'm interviewing Ms. Lindsay Bassett on the School of Fine Arts Drama Pathway. So what is the School of Fine Arts? What do you learn? The School of Fine Arts is designated for students who are academically successful in the four fine arts areas and they're able to stick with like-minded students in those classes. Um, they learn specialized skills in whichever art field they're in. Uh, theater students will focus on acting, of course, um, but they also learn technical theater, they learn light and sound, they learn costume and makeup, and so there's a lot of different aspects that go into it. What got you into theater? Honestly, um, there wasn't an English teaching position open, and they said, hey, we have this theater one, and I said, great, I'll take it, because I need to pay back my student loans. Um, <laughs> so I've been doing it for 10 years since, and I really love it. So how do you get into SOFA? There is an audition process that takes place after Christmas break. Um, by February, March, we try to have everybody who's eligible selected. Um, the only people eligible to audition would be incoming freshmen, and then current freshmen are able to in some areas. Like a lot of people are shy their freshman year, so I allow freshmen to audition for theater. Um, Usually, though, the band and vocal performing students would want to do that as an incoming eighth grader. What do you think the okay? What do you think the future of Sofa will be like? Um, it might be kind of a dream of ours, but we'd really love to have an arts wing of the school dedicated to nothing but the School of Fine Arts. Um, you know, eventually maybe cross my fingers a new auditorium. That'd be fabulous. Um, but we anticipate it to continue to grow and to find students who are really wanting to focus on arts when they get out of high school. What is Drama Club like? Drama Club is super fun. Um, we go to competitions, we put on shows, we're getting ready to start kind of an offshoot of Drama Club for improvisation. Um, we are really one big family. We love hanging out even outside of rehearsal times. Um, but Drama Club is open to anyone. Um, you don't have to be in the School of Fine Arts. You don't even have to be in my theater classes. Some people's schedule won't allow for that. So you just um, come out during audition season and you're a member, really. What is your favorite part of being a theater teacher? Um, it's super fun. <laughs> we goof around. We get to analyze scripts and talk about characters that... The realistic characters are kind of fun, but when you come across characters that are not realistic, it's fun to discuss them. Um, and really, probably my most favorite part is doing the makeup. I love special effects makeup. 